Shalom. First and foremost, call Loyum, Wakabala, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Arachak, Barash. All praises and honor to the Heavenly Father, names will be begotten Son, who the worldly calls Jesus Christ in the name of the Holy Spirit. Dear ones to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the hopefully elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. This freaking world is becoming more and more bizarre, mad, crazy. Is 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 you know it's getting more disturbing. But uh, you know, we, we was warned in scriptures that iniquity shall be increased and will be at an all-time high. You know, the spirit of anti-Messiah. It tells us in Isaiah the 60th chapter that, you know, gross darkness will cover the people. And um, seeing the direction that, you know, the world is heading in, this is why you understand why there needs to be a second death. Uh, the second death is, is just about ready for these people. And this is one of the, you know, rare times I'll give a Christian some credit. You know, because, yeah, we war with these Christians, especially if they are uh, Edomites, you know, non-Israelites, you know, of another nation. But uh, you got some of these Edomites, you know, the ones that, that are down in the Bible Belt, you know, some of the ones that still have the conservative views. You know, they uh, still stand upon the, the moral principles of the scriptures and the things contained in the law. You actually uh, give them credit for, you know, standing upon it, you know, because there's not many of them out there. And some of them are actually getting persecuted. Because this is exactly what will happen when you stand upon righteousness. The Lord said, who shall rise up for me against the evildoers? Who shall stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? So. I got two videos up. And I'll play this one. This is just only a minute long. And then the next one, it's a bit longer, so I'm not going to play the whole video. But um, you can see that they're cracking down on public speaking and you speaking the truth. So we know that free speech is pretty much up out of there. All right. You will be penal penalized in a, in, a, in, a, in a minute if you start to... uh. You know, go against the, the 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 confusion, the wine that we see going on in, in in the society. These people are bugged the hell out, man. So anyway, I'm gonna play this one, and this is dealing with, you know, this Christian out in um, I want to say this is in uh, the UK somewhere, but um. He was arrested and convicted for what they call misgendering. I don't even know that was a term. So if a person that's a male opts out to, to become female and that's what they want to be acknowledged as, and if you don't acknowledge it and you call them by their proper gender, that's a hate crime and they call it, they call it misgendering. So when you got when you, when when it's get to that point, um, the second death is uh right around the corner. We ain't got we ain't got that much time left. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna just uh play this clip and Lord willing, y'all can hear it. All right, and then uh, we'll go to the next one. <laughs> Men and women and leaves, Jesus didn't come to condemn you. Jesus came to save you. Let me tell you who I am. My name is David, and I'm a Christian preacher. And uh, he, he ain't coming back to, uh, we'll, we'll show you how he's actually coming back. Because he's going to address all this madness, all this rebellion in the earth. He's only coming back to save his elect. And if you not of the elect, <laughs> this 
you're going to get met with uh, something in, in, in his hand. Let's go to uh, Matthew 10 and 34. In Matthew 10, verse 34, it says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And in, in, in the prophets, they prophesy how the Lord is going to come. He's going to come to do the bidding of the Father when he comes back and make war. All right, he's going to come back to judge and make war. All right, and it tells you that there's going to be a death toll. All right. When he comes back and pleads with, with all these all this filth, right, with all this rebellion, it's gonna be bodies from one end of the earth to the other. Isaiah 66 and 15 it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. So he, he's coming back to save, but this is also what he's coming back to do. It says to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. But by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay, and a lot of Christians don't preach this enough. All right, well, you got the the, the true men of the Lord, the, the Israelites, that's going to, you know, herald in the coming of the Lord, and they're going to preach it the right way. We can't leave this out, man, how the Lord is coming. It's not going to be all good. That's why it says in Amos, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, for what good is in it for you? All right? Even you, for you Christians. All right? So anyway, so you see he's out there, you know, with his uh, Jesus message. Uh, he preaching another Jesus. You know, we don't uh, subscribe to the Jesus of the Christians. Uh, we subscribe to the Messiah of the of, of the Bible, and which his true name is Yahushai, who is a so-called black man from the tribe of Judah. That's who we preach, and he ain't with none of this madness. This, you know, all this uh, confusion in in the earth. It's just straight up bizarre, mad, crazy, sick. Okay. I knew that I wasn't being treated the way I should be treated in that situation. <laughs> this is where I was set up. This is where the crowd began. So you can see that he was being attacked. Or he was being, um, you know, scoffed at. He was being, uh, you know, mocked, ridiculed. But basically, simply standing upon. The word defending the Mosai's order. This is what you'll get in this in this mad crazy world. All these people they love death because they hate the Most High, and that's in the scriptures. They that hate me, he that sinneth sinned against his own soul, and and they that hate me love death. And all these people, they love death because they love the works that come with death, which is the works of sin. Because sin feels good. All right. You wanted to get you as a woman want to get with another woman because you, you envy men or hate men. You know, you going down on each other. Wearing strap ons and all that. You, you, you love that. But that all comes with a price at the end of all that. Same with you men. You sheet tapping men. You sword fighting men. All right. But this is what will happen. As a matter of fact, let me get uh, Isaiah 59 and 15. And I'm going to read it in the NLT. And like George Orwell say, we always quote that, you know, when uh, in, in, in the 
What did he say? In a time of universal deceit, speaking the truth is considered a revolutionary act. And that's pretty much what you're doing. And you're being bold. But the scriptures say the righteous is as bold as our lions, man. So, you know, once you go out there and you're bold and you speak the, the truth. In the midst of this, you know, perverted society, this is what happens. You get attacked. It says uh, Isaiah 59 and 15. Yes, truth is gone. And anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. And, uh, you know, the, the, the law is, is slack, like it says in Habakkuk. There ain't no justice because the law is slack and judgment uh, never go forth. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeds. You do wickedness, you'll be rewarded for it. But when you do righteous and denounce wickedness, you get condemned. So this world is just... uh. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is 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 that's why I, that's why I always say the second death is uh is ready. All right. Let me get uh let me get John 3. It is uh, John 3 and verse, um, I'll start, yeah, I'll start at 18. It says, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in the Most High's one and only son. I'm talking about Yahweh Shai. You know, these people don't believe in Yahweh Shai. They are anti-Messiahs. Because if they, if, 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 if they believed in him, then they would have, they would do the things that he said. All right. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. All right. And this is love that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. But they, they're rebelling against the most high, um, the most high's order. No different than the time of Noah, man. And the judgment is based on this fact. The Most High's light came into the world, and that's Yahweh Shah. He represented that light. But people loved darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light. You know, like a person that's uh, irritated when you cut the light on after they've been asleep, you know, in a, in a dark ass room, you know, that you got people. They like to, you know, they don't like to have their lights on. They just, the whole house is dark, blinds closed. The only thing they got on is maybe the TV. And when you turn the light on, they immediately want you to turn it off because it, you know, their eyes hurt. But that's these people when you speak uh, righteousness. They'll immediately start to attack you, man. Because you sh you shine in that light and they see the evil within themselves and they don't and it, it's just it's unpleasing. But hey, the scriptures say to you know cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show the uh, show the house of uh, Jacob his transgressions, the house of uh, Israel their sins. You know we mainly go get on our people. We expect Esau to be what he is. A lot of those people in that crowd, they was more than likely Edomites. So automatically off rip, you know, they're, they're not going to do what's right. It just ain't in them. Let favor be shown unto the wicked in a land of uprightness, yet will they not learn righteousness. It says, all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it. For fear their sins will be exposed. And that's why, you know, they didn't like Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai he testified that the works that they were doing were, were wicked. And he was calling them hypocrites. You know, Yahweh Shai saw everything. And we see everything and we're sighing and crying 
for all abominations that be done in the midst. Got to raise up children in the, in in this hellhole, man. You, you they're trying to make your children uh, pray. With all this 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 trans shit, man. Anyway, we'll go back and play some more of this. And together, does God accept the LGBT community? This gentleman asked the question: Does God accept the LGBT community? Yes, this is the first for me uh, being arrested for so-called misgendering someone. You're aware she's a woman. No, I'm fully aware. But this is a man. It's Are you fully aware that she's a woman? Shh, man, shut the hell. These people are crazy, man. You eat them my bitches. They're 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 nuts, man. They're pistachio nuts. You know, and I'm pretty sure she's uh referring to the trans person that she's defending. And this is what got him arrested. They're jumping to the defense of this trans person. But I would have, you know, because I'm pretty sure she tried to say, well, this person is just as a just as woman as, as I am. And I would have been like, oh, yeah, well, won't y'all get in the ring then? Go get in the octagon. Go do a weightlifting, uh, a weightlifting tournament. And still... Proclaim, still stand on that. Still proclaim that this, 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 this fucking man is as woman as you. Let let her come to you know. Would you support that person going to a all female correctional facility and watch them and watch their cognitive di dissonance unfold? A lot of these people are they're mentally bugged out, man. But that's uh, and it's mainly in these places where the wine is at. All right, the the, the wine of uh, uh of, of Esau, be transgressive by wine. Intoxicated with that Western philosophy. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm gonna finish this out. You know, just because somebody feels like a woman or, or they believe they're a woman, if we simply say, no, I don't agree with you, I believe that you are a man, you can be arrested for that and, and prosecuted for that. And only in a wicked, evil world. All right. Well, let me get this in uh, Isaiah. These people are basically rebelling against the Most High and what he established. Isaiah 45 and verse 9, it says, Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the pot share strive with the pot shares of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou or thy work? He have no hands. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? And that's what they're doing. This, this, this trans movement, that's exactly their sentiment. All right. You know, why did you make me this? Or why did you make me that? I think you made a mistake. And that, that ain't nothing but the Lord giving these reprobates. All right, these, these, these people that the Lord is going to ultimately judge, he just gave them over to that reprobate mindset so that they can be judged. You know, so, you know, all, all this sin and iniquity is only piling up, man. Especially uh, Babylon. Even though this is over in Europe, which we know that, you know, this is the, you know, Europe, that's the where the beast dwells. All right, that's the belly of the beast, man. The bottomless pit. So you know it's demonic over there. And the Lord's going to destroy the beast as well as Babylon. These are two prominent places where Esau is uh, uh, has 
the power in, in, in rule. All right. Now you understand why the Lord, when he when it talks about the destruction of Edom and also Babylon, is interchangeable or synonymous. Because the Lord is gonna wipe wipe them out, wipe their their uh kingdom out. Because this wickedness gotta stop. They are known as the border of wickedness, and whom the Lord will have indignation forever. So this is why the Lord is going to have these uh, Edomites as his prime target. Okay. So let me go to this one real quick. There's another situation. This is in uh, Canada. And this is about 2 minutes, 28 seconds in. So I'm going to just uh, play this. This is just a young uh, high school Christian dude. He looked like an Edomite. I don't know what he is, but, you know, he looked like an Edomite. But um, he's one of them conservative type of Christians that stand upon, you know, the, the, the biblical morale of, of, of the scriptures. All right, holding to, you know, the natural order of things. And these devils, you know, according to the agenda is to do away with that. But they're trying to, you know, dismiss the image of, of our Lord and set in place their own image. So listen uh, to this real quick. When you said what you did. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't disrespectful at all. I uh, exercised my fundamental freedoms, and that I wasn't going to leave on a request. So uh, they ended up arresting me, and they charged me with trespassing. Were you hateful or disrespectful? What tone did you take when you said what you did? Now, mind you, this was uh, supposed to be after, you know, a woman um, revealed to him that she saw, you know, one of those trans persons you know, go to the female's uh, restroom and she felt uncomfortable. And, you know, he took it upon himself to, you know, express, you know, his 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 view. And uh, it got him in trouble, basically. Because they're trying to do away with, you know, the Most High and being educated on who the Most High is and, you know, the biblical history. They're trying to remove that out of the education system. Because they're grooming these uh, children up in this new generation to be a bunch of uh, demons, a bunch of Satanists. All right? To be a bunch of anti-Messiahs, that's what they're grooming them up to be. This is why they're trying to get, you know, the Bible out of the schools. So, just listen real quick. No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't disrespectful at all. I, uh... I voiced my beliefs, my sincere beliefs, and uh, I never directed at a specific trans student that was doing anything. Um, I don't contone their behavior, but I also sympathize with them because they're a victim of our society um, and our education system and our the terrible parents that have encouraged and pushed that on their children. I was called a racist, a sexist, a bigot. Uh, by, like staff and students were involved in this stuff. And uh, yeah, I just continued to voice my beliefs and... Uh, I had ended up getting me arrested. There was conditions they wanted me to agree to in order to return to school. As a Christian, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to accept the falsehood. I'm not going to go along with the mainstream narrative that is completely contrary to God's natural order. So um, I couldn't agree to those conditions, and uh, that's where I'm at at this point. Were you actually... I like how he put it. You know, basically the... the... The mainstream narrative is contrary to the most High's natural order, and it sure is. All right, because right now they're saying that evil is good and good is evil. All right, this is uh, Isaiah fit. Uh, it's like your Isaiah five and twenty, and it says, "Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter." And this is what, you know, that movement is about pretty much trying to make something good out of something evil. They're trying to say that it's progressive, but it causes more harm 
than good. Why would you call that good? Especially if the Lord deems it evil. It's, it's abominable. The Lord didn't create you in that image. So what, what are you doing? So when you go against the Lord's uh, natural order, you're really harming yourself. But, you know, we living in that world where, you know, darkness is, is pretty much light. Especially over here, man. Isaiah 10. It's like yeah, I put uh, Job. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, it is Job. Job 10. And uh, verse 21, it says, Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. All, right, all people know is just to be uh, wicked. That's their uh, impulse. So there's no order. There's no structure because the man that's in power, the man that's that, that's in rule, he doesn't know how to govern the, the earth. And he's definitely not going to govern it according to the most size instructions. So everything is, is out of order. Everything is turned upside down. All right, women and men roles. All right, women, masculine women, feminine men. Men, you know, wearing uh, women's clothing. Men walking around with uh, purses. All right, you see what, what they do with Jake on, on the cover of GQ. But that's supposed to be the new era uh, masculinity. This is what they're this is what they're uh, brainwashing the people with. So there ain't no order. All right. So let's uh, go from there to uh, Psalms eighty-two and uh, five. And it says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. And that's why everything is suffering. Because it's, it's all out of order. It's, it, everything is going to, uh, uh, against, it's going contrary to the most size natural order. And that's why the earth is suffering. Is why, you know, disease and sickness is at an all time high. You know? This is why depression is at an all-time high. All right? Because things are just out of whack. So, yeah, man, this, 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 it, it, it has to stop. And eventually it will. But right now, you know, the devil is still in, in power. The earth is giving it to his hand. So, you know, what manner of, of, of the ruler is, so are the people. So the people are going to, they're going to be under that same vibration. So when you come out and you denounce it, you stand up against it, you know, it's going to be a reaction, of course. And all this is is just, you know, a battle of uh, good versus evil. Let's see if I can find that. I think it's in the Apocrypha. Saraka uh, 33. It's a rock 33, and this is in the Common English Bible. Verse 14 and 15, it says, Good is the opposite of evil, and life is the opposite of death. So the sinner is the opposite of the godly. Observe then all the works of the Most High, two by two, one, op one opposite the other. All right? And that's just what it is. All right, good is set against evil, life against death. So is the sinner against the godly. All right. And, uh, you know, we know the ungodly, the works of the ungodly, the Lord hates. They want to say that, you know, what we're saying is uh, hate or it's hate speech. 
Well, the Most High has things that he hates. Your maker, he, your creator, he hates particular things. Wisdom of Solomon. Fourteen. Yeah, Wisdom of Solomon fourteen and verse uh, nine it says both are equally hateful to the most side, the godless craftsmen and the products of their god godlessness. And it's talking about idolatry, but also you can just talk about the sinful acts, you know, because uh an act of sin can be conducted unless the man you know uh, brings it forth so not only that act you just committed but the act that you did uh commit and it wouldn't have been able to happen unless you did it did the act so the lord hates you and the act that you did when you do it it says the thing that has been produced will be punished along with the one who produced it. All right. And it's no different than, like it says here, uh, let's go to James. James 1 and uh, 13. You'll always hear sinner, you'll always hear Christians say the Lord, he doesn't hate the sinner. He just hates the sin. All right. Well, the Lord, he, 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 if, as long as you're doing that and you're blatantly, you're deliberately doing it and you have control over what you're doing and you and you're doing it and, and, and rebelling against the Mosai, he hates you. And if, if you don't repent and you don't stop tempting him, he, he, he will deal with you. James 1 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the Mosai. For the most high cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. All right. You have the, the ungodly person in his ungodliness. All right. He's working that work of uh, ungodliness. All right. Whether it be man with man, woman with woman, we know it's an, it's an abomination. All right, it says, in sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Okay, so that's why, you know, fear is one of the best uh, temptation repellents, man. Because you know at the end of that, you know, if, if you give in to that temptation, death is awaiting you. Especially if you knew better. So these people, you know, they're they don't fear until it's too late. All right, like it says in Ecclesiastes eight, because sins against an evil work isn't executed speedily, therefore it's, it, it is in them, you know, in the hearts of men to 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 do uh, evil. But it's gonna go well with them that fear the Most High, but it ain't gonna uh, go well. With the wicked, though you know their life uh, be prolonged, All right? So, um, yeah, I think that's about it. You know, there, I mean, there's other scriptures I can go to, but you know, I think that's it. All right, but um, you know, th seeing this in the earth, man, and these people, they, they, no matter how much, um. You talk about the you know the, the history dealing with Sodom and Gomorrah. You know the Lord left evidence; He left the receipts of what He did to those cities, and it just it, it doesn't matter. They're like they don't look at that and be like, you know what? Damn, you know, maybe we shouldn't live like this. Look what He did to them cities. It hasn't been inhabited ever since. And when you read that uh, precept in the Apocryphal Wisdom of Solomon in the tenth chapter, it tells you how the Most High, you know, he 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 pretty much uh, left a memorial of their of their foolishness. 
all right? He left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness, man. Because they didn't regard the wisdom. They didn't regard, you know, the most size uh, order. So this is why the Lord is going to, you know, leave this place, all right, for that final judgment. And we can't wait, you know, because at least on that day, you know, after all this shit gets burned up, then we look for a, a new heaven and a new earth where it dwells righteousness. Okay. So anyway, um, I'm going to end off with that. And our Lord willing, this is edifying. Let me give all praises to Yahweh Shemiah Shai. Shalom.